Hi, in today's video we're going to look at something interesting. Today we're going to talk about our old friend, the compact disc or CD player. One of the questions that I get asked all the time when people contact me is they have a Newtone IM4406 and the CD player doesn't work. Sometimes it hasn't worked for years and sometimes it worked five minutes ago and then they changed to the CD and then it stopped working. And the question is always, is it repairable? And today we're going to talk about the CD assembly in general and the ins and outs of how they work and the likelihood that it could actually be repaired. So what we have here is a CD assembly out of an IM4406. And just to be clear, this is a completely different CD assembly than the later IMA4406s had, and they are not interchangeable. They are completely and totally different. They are completely and totally different physical design, and they do not fit into each other's faceplates. In fact, the surrounding circuit boards that mount around the unit for the rest of the master station are shaped differently and there's simply not enough room to accommodate one in the other. So it's a dedicated design and this video applies strictly to the IM4406s. And to give you some idea of how this would be situated in a faceplate, and I will try to find a picture to include in the video, this is the portion of the CD player assembly here that you would see through the door when you opened it to insert a CD. And in fact, if you were doing that, you would take your favorite CD. Uh, this is Sticks, Come Sail Away With Me, and it would snap onto the hub of the CD player just like this. And when the seat, when the door is closed and you pu push play, it will spin. Hopefully it doesn't fall off, but it will spin like this as the CD plays. So that's how you orient this. If you open up an IM4406 and you, you tilt it down from the wall, this would be facing towards the floor. And on the back of the faceplate, it'll look like this. The main circuit board here is vertical and the rest of it is here. CD players are a very complex device. It's much more complex than most people would ever imagine and it's not at all like one person described it to me. It's just a fancy modern version of a record player and in reality no it's not. A record player is almost entirely an analog and mechanical device and you drop the needle on the on the record and it, it picks up the vibrations in the grooves and you hear sound. That's not at all how a CD player works. This is entirely different. If record players were designed, it would be back in the Flintstones days and CD players definitely belong to the Jetsons. So there's a lot to a CD player assembly and I'm gonna show you the different bits of it and talk about the ins and outs of fundamentally how it works. This isn't a super technical video. If you're really interested in the highly technical aspects of a CD player, Google it and you'll find more than you would ever want to know about it. So this is a complete assembly and now let's go ahead and look at some of the individual parts of it and see how it goes together and what we're facing when we try to talk about repairing one. The first part of it is this. This is a molded plastic chassis. This is the same part as this would be like this. And this is the part that holds all of the other assemblies. And this is the part that's actually screwed into the back of the faceplate. It's just an injection molded part. It's very specific, but it's not very interesting. So let's move on to something that's somewhat more interesting than this. Here we have the head assembly and that's the same part as the front part of this one. And on this, we have many different things. Here is the hub that spins, that spins the CD, and we can snap our stick, stick CD onto it, and it will spin. And then here we have what looks like a little clear plastic button. And the clear plastic button is actually a lens and inside the lens is the laser diode. Now, you're never supposed to touch the lens because if it becomes scratched, it will not allow the laser that comes out of it to be focused correctly and read the information on the back or the shiny part of your CD. Ooh, pretty colors. Anyway, 
Um, this is a very important assembly because if you very carefully push on it, you'll see it moves in and out and it actually moves side to side. And what you can see here a little bit is these copper colored bands here and here are actually little electromagnetic coils and there's actually magnets in here and if I let the screwdriver sort of fall into it it'll the magnet will pull the screwdriver blade down to it when you turn a CD player on and it looks for the beginning of the CD to find out what kind of CD it is and where the beginning of it is this lens actually is focused it will move in and out and it will move back and forth as it focuses the infrared laser beam so it can read the information on the CD accurately. And it's always moving in and out because as the CD spins on the hub, it may not track 100% true. It may wobble in and out slightly or this way and it has to compensate for that. So the lens is movable and the lens actually slides across like this as the CD is played. CDs play in the opposite order that a record does. A record starts on the outer edge and the needle moves in towards the middle. On a CD, the lens begins in the center of the CD and as it plays, it moves outwards towards the end. And it moves very, very, very slowly, little incremental steps one at a time. And so it tracks along with the tracks on the CD. If we turn it over, we find some interesting things on the back. We have two different motor assemblies. This is the spindle motor, and that's the one that spins the CD. And down here, we have what's referred to as the sled motor. Now here is the back of the lens assembly. It's this portion right here. And again, I can push this and it moves back and forth. This whole entire assembly is usually referred to as the sled assembly, and it's connected to the other circuit board through this bit of what's called flat flex cable. There are actually little tiny copper, um, they're not actually, I guess they're wires, they're flat copper bands that are embedded in the plastic, and you can kind of see it. You can see the lines inside of it. Those are actually individual little wires, and they're all on one side and if we were to count them I think there are about 28 or so inside of that and this is flexible so the sled can move back and forth and the ribbon flexible cable move, allows it to move freely. So the sled assembly moves back and forth and this is the motor that's responsible for that. There are some gears and things here also which help move it along. So this is an important assembly. If we want to look a little further we can remove this screw and this little tiny bit of circuit board here becomes loose and if you notice there's this there's the same a portion of the flat flex cable here it's sort of the orangey colored part and actually if we turn it over you can see here that it's also here this orangey part here this is part of the flat flex cable there is a connector here and it plugs into this black socket and then this is a, the other piece of flat flex cable and there are actually really tiny small electronic parts for instance here and here that are soldered into the flat wires within the cable so it's a component on flex cable design. This right here, this little portion here, this is also another electronic component. And if we were to flip it over, we would see that on this side, there's a cutout in the board and the bottom half of the chip is exposed. And this is an optical sensor and it's actually the laser diode itself and if we look down inside here 
there's a prism here that the infrared laser shines through and I think there's some other optical mechanical parts down inside. I'm not really going to take all this apart. And then it goes through the lens which moves and focuses. So this is a very serious design and it has to work exactly right for the CD player to work. The next bit that we're going to look at is this little board. This board is this board here on the complete assembly and it's also the board that the flat flex ribbon cable plugs into from the laser diode assembly. It plugs in right here. So this board would be considered, it's sort of the power driver board. It's the board that controls many of the functions of this assembly. And it has a chip on it. It would be considered the power driver for many of the different functions in the hub assembly. This chip is responsible for the focusing coils for the lens. It's in charge of the tracking coil, which is the one that allows it to move back and forth or side to side. It controls the pickup head. It controls both of the motors, both the hub motor or the what would be called the disc motor and also the sled motor. So this little chip controls all of the functions of this assembly and this communicates with parts on the main board. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this board is the same board as this. It would be right here. And this is really the heart of the CD player assembly. One of the things to think about is while the CD player is a mechanical device in many respects, it's primarily an electronic device. So on this board, this is a two-sided board. On this side, we have all of the simple and common components. And primarily what we have here are power supply section here and other fundamental either isolation sections or power supply sections. Since all of the other parts plug into this board, this board is supplying power and communication for the rest of the CD player. If we turn it over, we sort of get to the heart of the matter here. And you'll see on this side, we have three large chips. This top one here is a microprocessor. And the simple explanation of what this does is it's a system management chip. It manages all of the other parts of the CD player assembly. It has all sorts of information programmed into it and it coordinates the communication between the different parts and allows everything to work together. All of the chips on this board are all made by Toshiba. And these are all dedicated chips that were specifically designed for CD player applications. And that's why they all come from the same manufacturer because if you're going to design something like this, it's easier to use chips that were designed to all work together as a unit. That's why they're all Toshiba. So here we have the system management chip this one here is primarily in charge of managing the focusing and the tracking of the sled assembly. This one down here is actually the primary microprocessor or microcontroller for the entire CD assembly. And this would be considered the brains of the CD player. This one has the firmware or instructions loaded into it that tell the CD player how to operate inside a Newtone IM4406. So it's a fairly complicated device. I didn't actually look up what this chip here is. I probably should have. Maybe I'll put it at the end of the video. There are some other things that are interesting on this board. One, there's this little assembly right here. This little assembly right here, this is an infrared emitter and receiver. And this shows through the, the faceplate behind the CD player door. And the purpose of that is it's a detection device to prove to the CD player that there's actually a CD in the unit. When you mount, when you take a CD and you install it in the unit, you're installing it with the shiny side towards the emitter and the sensor. And the emitter sends out a little infrared beam of light, which bounces off the shiny part of the CD player. And the 
receptor picks it back up because it reflects and that proves to the CD player that there's actually a CD in here. One of the reasons that CD players have a lot of built-in safety devices is because while the power from the laser diode is very, very small, it is an absolute hazard to your eyes. If you were able to open the CD player door, press play without a CD being in place, you would have a chance of having the laser shoot you in the eye, and then you would most likely go blind. So we, they didn't really want that to happen. So there's a lot of protection devices inside a CD player. This is one of them. So one of the other safety devices is this switch right here, which you can see moves like this. And this is the door open close switch. When the door is closed on the CD player, the switch is pushed down and when you open the door, it pops back up. This tells the CD player that if the door is open, that it should not turn on because again, you don't want to get zapped in the eye with a laser and go blind. Okay, so now you have sort of a brief overview of the parts in a CD player assembly. So let's talk a little bit about why CD player assemblies quit working. So let's look at the main board to start with. And one of the things that I see right off the bat is this area here, which is all power supply, this connector right here is the connector and it would have a ribbon cable plug into it. And that's where the five volts from the primary power supply of your IM4406 powers this board and the rest of the CD player. And if you look here carefully, down in this area, what I see right off the bat is this area of the board is considerably darker than this part of the board over here. In fact, if you looked really carefully, it's very dark down in here, and it gradually, and it's dark over here, and it very gradually becomes lighter and lighter as it moves across, as you move across the board, and when you get way over here, it's pretty much the original color. So the circuit board has turned hot because this area of the board has gotten hot. And when things get hot, it's usually because the components in this area are beginning to fail and they're drawing more current and they're out of specifications. So the power supply, which is like the heart of the CD player, is failing and that of course affects everything else. One of the problems when you have a failing power supply is everything else that's downstream, all of the rest of this assembly is affected by it because it's receiving either too much or too little voltage, which is very hard on things like microcontrollers and microprocessors and other very complicated chip. It isn't always that it just has too much or too little voltage, but it's also the kind of voltage it gets. All of the electronic devices in an assembly like a CD player are designed to use DC voltage. DC is your typical, like you get out of a battery, you have a plus and a minus. And when you have DC voltage, if you were to look at it on an oscilloscope, what you would see is a nice even straight line across the screen because DC voltage is flat. There is no waveform in it, that's why it's DC. When you have things like failing power supplies like you have here, Part of the power supply design is are the components that remove the waveform out of the out of the fundamentally made DC to make that flat straight line. When these components begin to fail, you start to get what's called ripple in the in the DC waveform. So instead of it being a nice straight line that goes across like this, you start to get this little tiny bit of wave in there. And components like these integrated circuits, they don't like the wave. They get very upset when there's a wave and it can damage them so they don't work properly any longer. And that's one of the problems that can occur. The other thing that can occur is if these become damaged, since these are the controller ICs for the CD player as a whole, one can damage another, which can damage another, which can damage the devices that it's supposed to be controlling. So let's go back to our hub assembly for a second and talk about this a little more. So now we know we probably have a failing power supply. It's very likely that we have too much power ripple in our 
power circuitry, and that ripple could very easily be damaging the integrated circuits that control the CD player, and therefore the controlling devices can damage other devices. And one of the big things that comes up on CD players all the time is we talked earlier about it having a laser diode. And the laser diode is not actually this. This is actually the lens. But if you remember, we removed this little board and this little chip right here is the chip that produces the infrared laser beam that reads the CD. This type of part it is very, very sensitive to the level of voltage that is supplied to it, but also the amount of current. The current is the amount of power that it has to draw from. And if it receives too much voltage or too much current, even for what would be one hundredth of one second, it can easily burn this out. That's how sensitive it is. So if you think about the whole assembly on a whole, you may have a failing power supply that's producing the wrong voltages and those voltages have ripple in it and the ripple is damaging the controlling ICs, which is damaging other ICs, which are controlling the laser diodes, power and current, and it goes poof and one hundredth of one second is not very long. And that goes back to the original description, which is it worked a minute ago and I changed the CDs and now it doesn't work anymore. So problems with CDs are very, very, very complicated. So that brings us to the point of why aren't they repairable or are they repairable? And the short answer to that is generally speaking, on an average, all things being equal, no, they're not repairable. We have gone to great lengths to try to figure out how to repair these CD player assemblies. We've actually taken it to the point where we've been able to identify which manufacturer made the hub assembly, and we've been able to source what are supposed to be new direct original equipment replacement hub assemblies. But for the most part, when you simply snap it into a CD player assembly like this, it doesn't work. And the reason that it doesn't work is because it's not the sole and only problem. There are other problems with that assembly also that simply prevent the new hub assembly and laser diode from working correctly. The other thing about CD players is if you look at this board, you'll notice all of these little blue items. There's one here, 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 here. There are None on that one. These are little adjustments. And there's also actually one on the laser diode assembly. There's one here, a little tiny one. And these are little trimmer adjustments. They fine tune how it operates. And the equipment and the time it takes to set up to try to check and adjust these is complicated. The time and the equipment that it takes to try to sort out which of these chips might be bad is very complicated. The piece of equipment that's required to actually measure the strength of the infrared laser that comes out of the laser diode, it's about a $36,000 piece of equipment. And I can tell you for a fact that there aren't enough people that want their CD players repaired that would offset the cost of a piece of equipment like that. So the long and the short of it is, unless there's support from the original manufacturer of something like a CD player assembly, the odds of fixing it are very, very low. So here we have another complete IM4406 CD player assembly. And you'll notice if we compare it to the first one in the first part of the video, a lot of the parts look different. The original one, all of these are black, and on this one, they're all blue. Why are they blue? Because this is one that I've tried to repair. And I've tried to repair this probably three times over the last, I don't know, four or five or six months. And I've gone to great lengths to try to repair it and try to diagnose what all the different problems may be with it. And for the most part, it's been completely unsuccessful. I do think I was able to get it to play successfully one or two times, but the rest of the time, it errors out and it doesn't play properly. Now, that brings me to a good point. I have talked to people that tell me, oh, I talked to a fella 
in New Jersey or I talked to another fella in Illinois and he told me, oh sure, I can fix your CD player, no problem. The rule at this shop is very simple. Unless you can repair an item 99.9% .9 of the time, and you can be certain that your repair will last the customer at least two years. You can't tell someone you can fix it and you can't charge for it. And I can tell you after a lot of effort and a lot of time spent in researching the parts and working on trying to repair these, my very best is I average about one out of every 80 that I can coax back to work again. And that's not 99.9%. And it's certainly not good enough for me to tell people, sure, I can fix your CD player, and I certainly can't charge them for it. Because even the ones that I can coax back into working, I'm not at all sure whether or not they will last for two years. And so we can't, we tell people, no, we really can't repair them. If someone tells you with great certainty that they can repair it, either they haven't really looked into the ins and outs of what it takes to do something like that, or they're just fooling themselves because they want you to send you them your set and they're gonna play around with it. I actually talked to an independent shop last year and what he told me he does is he'll get a CD assembly in from a customer, let's say this one, and it doesn't work. So then he's got all kinds of parts. Wait, you can't see that. He's got all kinds of parts from all kinds of other CD players that he's saved up. And he takes all this jumble of parts and he starts swapping them one for another into the piece that the customer sent to him until he finds a setup that actually works. And then he tells them, I fixed it, pay me and I'll send it back to you. That's not fixing it. That's just horsing around with it, hoping you can figure out some way with some luck to get it to work. And it's not right. You can't do that to people. You're not certain how long it's going to last. It could be on its last leg. It might last a day. It might last a month. I don't know. Maybe if you're lucky, it might last a year. As the man I used to work for when I first started doing U-Tone used to say, when a customer would ask him about something, what's, what's the warranty on a repair like that? He used to say, well, probably 30 feet or 30 minutes because there's no way to really know. So to answer the direct question, is the CD player in my IM4406 repairable? The short answer is no, probably not. Will it ever be repairable? No, probably not. Even if we were able to technically solve the problems with repairing it, for the amount of work that it would take to do it, for the cost of the parts and the diagnostic time and the labor to actually do the repair, with the shipping that you would have to pay to send it to me and the shipping you would have to pay to have me send it back, I'm guessing you would be looking at a repair of probably $250 to $300. And are people going to spend that kind of money to fix a CD player? No, I don't think so. There are too many other alternatives nowadays. Uh, you can simply add an audio input jack on the edge of your faceplate and you can buy a Bluetooth receiver. That'll cost you altogether about $45. You can stream music from your phone or your tablet, and you've got something that's actually much more convenient to use than a CD player. So as sad as it is, I guess we have to face the reality that it's time to say goodbye to our old friend, the CD player. And I don't do that willingly because here at the shop where I fix your intercoms and try to fix CD players when I have a few extra minutes, I still have my Sony CD player that holds 400 CDs. And yes, it is full. And yes, I do use it all the time. And is it gonna break one day? Probably. Am I gonna be able to fix it? Probably not. What am I gonna do after that? I don't have any idea because I really like my CDs and I understand that other people do also. But when it comes to the CD players in your IM4406, if it doesn't work or it stopped working, it's time to say goodbye and do something else. It's a sad way to end the video, but that's the reality in today's world. I remember in 1983, when my father-in-law bought his very first CD player, it cost almost $1,000 and nobody was allowed to touch it. And he only had two CDs to start with because there weren't that many to buy. It was something really, really special. 
And you know, it was only like 15 years later, you could buy a Sony Discman at Target for $29. So that's how things change. It's time to say goodbye to our friend, the CD player and embrace newer, less expensive, more convenient technology. That's the ins and outs of CD players and IM4406 master stations. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. The more thumbs up we have, the better we feel about making the videos. This video is ad free as is our channel and always will be. We don't want to make you suffer through ads. If you would subscribe to our channel, we would appreciate it. It raise our search rankings on YouTube and more people will find our videos. That's all for today. See you in the next video.